So we are back some more and Cleveland Browns Madden NFL 17 franchise mode. So the first episode you went and did the team overview. We looked at every position we need, uh, every position that we had on the team. See the players we actually have in this team. Our team's not too bad. It's not as bad as I thought it was. Like I thought the offensive line is even worse than it is right now, but it's actually not too bad. All we need is a center and a better right tackle in order for this offensive line to be effective. Because right now, got Joe Thomas, 99 overall. That's incredible. Yeah, Joe Batoni, who has potential on him. Irving, who's might get better after the season. I have no idea, but Irving looks to be better after the season at 73 overall. You have uh, Greco right there at right guard. And Plazator, we probably have to replace him. I'm just going to say that right now. But right now... Our team's not too bad on offense. Our fullback's not the greatest, obviously. A 57 overall fullback is not good at all. Now you have Robert Griffin, the third at quarterback, just 72 overall. Not the greatest either, but RD3, they signed him in real life in order to be the quarterback. I don't want to mess that up and just go and cut him or something. That's just stupid to do. You have to leave RD3 as a quarterback because he needs a chance to win. RD3, a great quarterback in this league. He's got to get better. And now we have Isaiah Crowell, Duke Johnson, running back. Our team's basically just decent. So right now, let's go and continue this preseason. So right now, we're at week one of the preseason. We're facing the Packers at Lambeau Field. So let's first go check this weekly training, though. I have no idea what this is. I've never played franchise mode yet in a Madden NFL 17 franchise. So I have no idea what these all these new features are about. But right now, let's go check this out. So it looks like our offensive game plan is going to be on deep pass verticals because it looks like the, cover, the Packers love to run that cover three defense coverage. So, 12% of the time, I guess we should just go with that. Just whatever the computer thinks is good, because really, I think they know what they're doing, basically. And now let's go check out some of these guys. We're focusing on practice. So right now, you have Corey Coleman. We was going to get that extra XP. He needs it, too, because 80 would overall. You can get even better than that. He's like a superstar caliber player. Could reach almost 90 overall, I believe. But anyway, there's Emmanuel Ogba getting up that time. 76 overall left outside linebacker. Now you have Scooby Wright the third. 70 overall middle linebacker. He's young, 22 years old. So maybe he's going to have some normal development. But it looks like Corey Coleman, that quick development. He's going to be a superstar fast, which is good to see. So right now, is there anyone else that's actually a superstar? Or uh, quick development, I should say. Uh, Gary Barnage on there. Joe Hayden. I think he's 27, too. He can get a lot better. Uh, anyone else? Joel Petonio. He should be actually on there. Actually, we don't need Scooby Ray. How about that? We don't need Scooby Ray on here. We'll bring in... Because our team, we want to get like the good guys better already. And it looks like Petonio could get a lot better at that quick development trait. So, bring in Petonio. Agba. Should we really need Agba? Wait, wait, is he? What is he on our position chart right now? I want to see if he's our starting left outside linebacker. If he is, I'll leave him there. But if he's not, I'm not really sure what I'll do. Ah, uh, Mingo is our starting left outside linebacker. Okay, let's to make a decision here. Are we gonna go and get Agba better? I think that's what I kind of want to do because they drafted him this year. So might as well get him better after because you want to get your rookies better basically. Betonio is kind of an exception, but Corey Coleman, Betonio, and Agba look to be the guys. We're gonna go and get that quick development. For most of this preseason. But the rest, our defense is basically trash. Clear defensive line, it's terrible. Our right end, 72 overall. Left end, 78. It's okay, I guess. But then our defensive tackles, they're not good at all. They're going to be shredded up by the offensive line. We're not going to barely get any sacks this preseason. So we should probably look at adding a few defensive linemen, like some pack tackles probably, and maybe a right end in order to make this defense just a little bit more impressive because. Right now, 72 is not good whatsoever for a defensive line. But anyway, any other positions you need to check up on? Strong safety for sure right here. 71 overall. That's not acceptable whatsoever. So plan A, find a strong safety, I guess. Plan B, find some defensive help right here on the defensive line right here. Because we're going to be eating a lot of these offensive linemen. We're not going to barely get any sacks or provide any pressure on the quarterbacks. And strong safety, I guess we need just for the deep passes. We don't want to... Get, miss any of those up so let's go and sim this first preseason game and see how we do uh training okay so the training here okay so it looks like i should get yeah i guess we just hit start training ah uh, there we go the pressure is on this one is for the gold. Hey man, that was great. I mean, you had a great day today. You've taken the first steps towards success in this league. But don't fall back and get lazy. There's more steps ahead, so you gotta keep it up. <laughs> it's 
So we had, a, we had a successful offensive practice right there. Practicing those deep pass verticals is great. 5 for 5, got the gold medal. RG3 actually looks pretty good in this game so far. Let's move on to the next drill. Hey man, that was great. I mean, you had a great day today. You've taken the first steps towards success in this league. But don't fall back and get lazy. There's more steps ahead, so you gotta keep it up. So we had a successful practice when it came to that run defense. Our gap play was successful, and we got the goal once again. So great practice today when it comes to that, at least for the week one of the preseason. So after the great practice, we had good offensive and defensive practice right there. But now we have to go and to continue on this week. So the thing is left is for this week, got the training complete. Now we have the preseason game against Green Bay. But we also have to cut two players after the game. And I think that's basically about it. We can either improve the team too. But we're most likely not going to do that yet. So let's go and move on to this preseason game. They come up in an empty set. Four wide receivers, one tight end. Into the red zone now. It's McCown. And a quick throw here. That's complete. And he'll take it into the end zone for a Browns touchdown. Their big tight end, his first NFL reception goes for six. And the Browns are within an extra point of tying this thing up. Boy, it's nice to have that big, reliable target you can go to. Each and every time. A lot of people see that position as a fallback. Throw it to them when all else fails. Not at all. This guy can make plays, and that's exactly what he They come out here in the eye. Again, it's Johnson. And he is into the end zone. Touchdown, Cleveland. Duke Johnson, a 15-yard touchdown run. And the Browns are able to cash in for six. McCann will try again on second down. And this is caught. I think he got that with one hand. They call it a gain of 19, and it moves the chains. That was a terrific catch. I mean, to go up there and get it one-handed like that, but I almost want to go into that riff about back in my day, the gloves weren't quite like this. When did gloves really become prevalent, just in general? I think in the 80s. I think as we start. Here we go! Red, not yet. And he'll barrel his way into the end zone for a Browns touchdown. Duke Johnson with two touchdowns on the season, both in this game. And the Browns have moved out in front here in the fourth quarter. Now he's given him a little jolt, just gave him the lead there, but two TDs now in the game. And that jolt puts them in the lead. Got to try it here. He's back to throw. He's going to let it fly. This is caught inside the 15. Touchdown, Packers. Jared Abradair. In the final minute, and the Packers have moved out in front here in the fourth quarter. So many practices we watched over time where the offense works on scoring late in the game and finding a way to win, as we just saw there. Just saw it right there. Now can they preserve that advantage? That Ball they game. Well, Charles, there's an old saying, don't let a loss beat you twice. You're exactly right about that, Brandon. So he did unfortunately take the L on that game. It was a great, it was a great game throughout the entire play at process, but he unfortunately took the L on that interception at the end. But anyway, we're going to go and move on to the next preseason game. Let's go. Wait, what's this? Okay, so it's all the XP earnings from the game. Okay, so let's just go and upgrade route running for Corey Coleman. That way it's like the easiest one. You need him to run some good routes for you. Ogba... Uh, awareness might be great. Pursuit? You know what? You need his awareness. Ah, his pursuit. Mm. I'm not sure. Let's just go and roll with the uh, pursuit just for now. Uh, there you go. So we've done all that. Got all the upgrades done for the preseason game one. Choose which players you want to cut. And now that's cut day. So now I have to cut two players right now. I'm going to do the opposite. I'm going to cut four players. Double that. So oh, one player we probably need to go and cut. Uh, why does it keep telling me this? So it's telling me players are caught on here, which is good to see. Okay, so now it's time for cut day. So cut day. So we got Charlie Hewitt. It's actually really nice to see that the players they think you should cut. 
Because it's really annoying going in there and just deciding, ah, oh, I should cut this guy or that guy. Now it finally goes and knocks down the players that you should probably could cut. And, yeah, so let's go. Let's see who should we cut. So Charlie Hewitt, we're probably going to cut him. He's 48 overall. That's just not good at all. So cut him. Terrell Pryor, I love to keep him, but I have no idea why he's 59 overall. I went looking for some roster updates, or just rosters in general. Couldn't find any yet, but 59 overall for Terrell Pryor. It's just not worth it. If you, he should have been, okay, 800k. That's not too bad. He should have been a lot higher, but I don't know. It's just all, these up, these rosters were created before the preseason in real life. Let's go and cut some more players. So who do you have left to cut? We have Dominique Alexander, so middle linebacker, 59 overall. Another guy who's probably going to get cut. We have six active middle linebackers, so we have more than enough room. See at the wider series, though, we have, we have a 10 active, but at least Darius Jennings has 89 speed and 76 catching, whereas Dominique Alexander, he's got good speed, good tackling, but he's just not good enough for our team. So we're going to just go and cut him off the squad. And now, wait, should we cut more players? Oh, yeah, we need four cut. Damn, it sucks. So Darius Jennings, uh, nah, we're not going to cut him. He's fine. Okay, so now you cut three players out of two. See how you can improve your team. I hate when that happens. But anyway, so they go improve our team. Do you think we should do it yet? Uh, let's go take a look at this roster. So this roster is a mess right now. C's and B's all across the line except that left tackle with Joe Thomas. But anything else? Uh, I got right, ta right tackle. We need to find somebody right there. ASAP. Right tackle. Same in center. Uh, anything else? Fullback, we need one for sure. Hmm. Defense. Who we have left for defense? Uh, that's no. We're gonna go on the rosters. Actually, it's a mess doing, dealing with this. There we go. So, should we cut another player so we have, can go and sign maybe two others onto the team and see how well they do? Uh, Glenn Winston. We really need that many uh, running backs this yet. How good is he? 81 speed. 84 agility. Uh, good, good carrying. Good ball carrying. Uh, you know he's not too bad. He's a typical guy he'd want to see in the preseason. So we'll leave Glenn Winston. He's fine. Uh, anyone else? Fullbacks. Malcolm Johnson. Let's see if he's even worth keeping on this team. Malcolm Johnson. Let's see, he's 86, 82. I'm not too bad, I guess. 71 strength. He's a decent wide receiver, but the problem is, is that he's like, what is he, 50-something overall? He's not even good whatsoever when it comes to, yeah, 57 overall, 24 years old. We could keep him because he has, maybe he has some room to grow. Ah, uh, his normal development too. Damn, it sucks. You know what? We're going to go and just cut him. We can find way better players in the free agency, and I don't care. We're going to be cutting like 50k off the roster. So we're fine with that. Let's go and move to the free agency, I guess. Let's go see and find a, find a decent replacement for Malcolm Johnson at fullback. Because I know for sure we could find a way better replacement at fullback after 59 or 57 overall. So let's go to fullbacks. Yeah, I got 78, 75s. Any young fullbacks that are good. Derek Coleman. How good is Derek Coleman? 86 speed, 85 acceleration, good agility, decent strength, good carrying. Uh, trucking. 80 at trucking. That's what you kind of want is you want a strong fullback. You plow through the line and get a first down on like third down. Uh, while carrying a 76. He's not too bad actually. He's okay. Uh, there's anyone? Is there anyone else though? Let's go look for trucking actually. Trucking is really underrated. So let's go to sort. Who's the best trucker in here? Got Lane Senior. What overall is he? He's probably a 50. 75. That's not too bad. Hmm. But is he the right for the right thing for a team though? His speed is terrible. That's the problem here. He got a decent speed. Lonnie Pryor. Lonnie Pryor. He's not too. Ah, uh, 69 though. Ah, he's not too bad though. 69 is not too bad. It's all about the ratings that you want in him rather than the entire overall of him. 80 speed, 87 acceleration, 82 agility, strength 66, uh, anything else? Trucking, yeah, 84. Good ball carrying vision. Anything else about him? Actually, he's not too bad. You know what? Let's do it. Let's go ahead and sign Loney Pryor. He's not too bad. And we just cut a prior anyway, so we need another prior in this team, and that man is Loney. So, he's got decent stats on him, might as well sign him to the active roster. Okay, so we need to find another player on the team, and we need so desperately need someone that's strong safety. We need help, especially there. So, uh, let's go 
and go to the free agency and see if we can find any decent strong safeties in the free agency for our team. Because we need a good, better one than like 72 overall. Not good whatsoever for a strong safety. Let's go to strong safety right there. Okay, so we got Will Hill 85. We don't really want to get 85 26 year old right now. Or we could. He's making 4 million, not too bad, I guess. Ah, uh, playmaker. 87 speed, 89 acceleration, 87 agility. Mm, 65 strength, 77 player recognition. He's good at zone coverage, okay. Uh, decent at tackling, 79. Good hit power. Will Hill is not too bad, actually. Will Hill a third? Mm, is any good? Yeah, he's not too bad, actually. Should we sign Will Hill a third? I think so. So Will Hill, look at this. Will, as soon as we sign him, like as soon as we sign him, I saw nothing wrong with him in the injuries, and he's just suddenly out for 29 weeks on here. Let's go see what his injury is. Achilles tear out 29 weeks. Oh my good god, I never saw it before. So he signed the guy. Maybe he tripped on the sidewalk. I don't know. Got hit by a car. Something. T I don't know what happened, but he tore his Achilles as soon as we sign him. So let's go and place him on IR. It's the only thing we really do at this point. Don't want to release him and get. F 4 million against us so now I have to go sign another strong safety let's hopefully help I me mean, let's hope that he doesn't go into tear his Achilles once again so if you find a guy who will not get injured for us I mean I'd tear my Achilles if I was going to play for the Browns but still uh <laughs> okay so who we need to look actually right now one stat we need to look at right now is there he is injury because we don't want a guy tearing his Achilles once again and <laughs> as soon as we sign him so who do we would really want in, this, in a strong safety, I guess? I don't know. We need to go look at some overalls here. See what's up. So, down here, any young players that you want? Because basically our team is full of young players. So, anyone that's under the age of 30, that's good. We got Bakari Rambo. Hey, Bakari Rambo, not too bad. Uh, let's see him. He's got good acceleration, good decent speed, I guess. Uh, strength not up there too much. He's not the greatest at man coverage at zone. He's okay. Uh, anything else? Catching's good. Or at least decent. Pursuit's not the greatest. Uh, wait, who's that? Oh, uh, Will Allen. Uh, anything else? Rambo. I don't know. He's decent, I guess. He's better than our actual starting st strong safety. So, literally any of these guys would be an improvement over we have right now. But, can we find a, st a taller, I guess, strong safety more than six feet? I guess it doesn't really matter too much, but... I don't know, it's kind of thing I'm looking at. So, got Antron Rolly. I don't want to sign old guys, that's the thing. Or a young team, we actually want to see him next year, maybe. So, let's go to Rambo. I think Rambo's not too bad, though. Gen 6 2. Yeah, he's not too bad. Actually, let's go and just go ahead and sign Bakari Rambo. I'm not really looking too much into this. If he's not good, we'll release him. If he's good, then that's great. So,. Anyone else? We'd sign a few more players, I guess. So let's go look at his position, see where we need to sign players. Is Bakari Rambo? He's not injured. There you go. So Bakari Rambo does not get injured as soon as we sign him. So anything up with our team? So Mingo, as soon as I, I release that team overview, he gets traded. So Mingo, I have no idea why they traded him. It didn't really make too much sense. I guess they want to give Ogba a chance to left outside linebacker. But M Mingo, we'll leave him on the team for now. Maybe after year one, we'll trade him, but still. Middle linebacker, 77 overall, Davis. That's not too bad, I guess. Paul Kruger's fine. Moore, uh, Hayden. Anyone else up? Right end, we need help desperately right now. I did change John Hughes into a left, uh, defensive tackle because he was huge. He would never get by any players whatsoever at the line because he's like, 80, I guess he's 85 strength, not too bad, but 59 speed isn't the greatest. He's more. He's basically more fit for a defensive tackle position more than an actual right end. So we put def John Hughes at a defensive tackle position. He's not too bad, I guess. 28 years old, 74 overall, 320 pound defensive tackle John Hughes. So he's fine there. Let's go and find a right end, I guess, because we need one right now. Right now, Bryant. He's really good though. Like he's your ideal left end, I guess, for this team. He's 70 overall, 30 years old, 310 pound. And you could actually move. 71, I guess, is not too bad of a speed, I guess, for a 300-pound guy. But he's got the good strength, good power moves, good play recognition, good acceleration, and good block shitting. So you need to find a guy who can tackle, actually. That's what we need to do. So free agents, who can we find for a good tackler? I guess 
300 pounds is not too bad for right, you know, right in, but still, we need to move John Hughes because he's like way too big to, to play the outside. So let's go ahead and find a right end on this team. Where is he? Right and right there. Okay. Okay, so you got Greg Hardy, the wife abuser or girlfriend abuser. I don't really want to sign him on there. Uh, anything else? Uh, Josh Boyd. Mm, let's go look at some tackling speed, tackling uh, statistics. Right there. Okay, who's the best tackler? We got Chris Canty. Okay, but overall is he? He's six seven, three hundred seventeen pounds. He's big man. And then you have Greg Hardy. I don't want to sign Greg Hardy, but he's good though. That's the problem. We find some cheaper guys because I don't want to spend five million on a guy who I have no idea if he'll be good or not. Uh, Josh Boyd's not too bad, I guess, for his age. Uh, but we're looking for guys over 72 overall, though. That's a problem. Philly Moa. Let's see him. Is he not too bad? He's 6'4", 308 pounds. He's huge. Uh, what is this? He's not too bad, I guess. Good power moves, good block shedding, decent speed, good strength. And his tackling is up to par too, I think. Is it? Yeah, 83 tackle. Actually, Philly Moa seems to be the best option here. He's 31. Nah, that's not too bad, I guess. Only 3 million for him. Let's go and sign Philly Moa to be our right end for the team. So we got Moa on the team now, finally. So we're adding a few veterans into the team. Needed veterans, actually. So now it's looking not too bad there. 74 overall, 74 overall, 74 overall, and 28, or 78 overall on the defensive line okay so one thing you should probably check out right now is a game uh just happened to see what the stats were because we don't have no idea what like what happened and stuff what who played well who didn't play well so let's go and move in a preseason schedule i don't know how to get this exactly so go on team schedule and see this box score hopefully see if some good players played well and all that kind of stuff so player stats Let's go to the Browns. So passing. So Josh McCowan, 253 yards passing, one touchdown, one interception in the game off. He played not too bad in uh, playing for Robert Griffin III. Robert Griffin III, only 13 yards passing, which is not good at all. Only one pass, too, which is pretty bad. At least one completion. Let's go on to rushing. So rushing. If Duke Johnson, 89 yards, 19 uh, carries. That's a pretty good number for Duke not Johnson. 4.7 yards per carry. That's decent, not too bad, but two touchdowns is a good thing in that one. And five broken tackles, not too bad of a performance by Duke Johnson, but anything else? Where's Crowall? Only four yards. Oh, I guess he played the first quarter, but still. Crowall, man. Now let's move on to receiving. So receiving, set the Seth DeValve. He played well, 47 yards re receiving, four receptions, not too bad. And one touchdown pass from McCowan. So... Seth DeValve, I'm actually pretty excited for him because he's not too bad of a player. He's tall, he's a great tight end, and that all kind of stuff. But next, we have Taylor Gatorill, 50 yards receiving. Duke Johnson, 24 yards. Uh, Jordan Payton, 46. Let's go start by this. There you go. Uh, who else? Duke Johnson, 24 again. Uh, and Lewis, Ricardo Lewis, 51 yards with receiving two receptions. Not too bad for Ricardo Lewis. What overall is he? Does it say? Ah, uh, it doesn't say. Okay. So now I'm going to block and I want to see this. So we had no sacks allowed whatsoever on the day, which is really good to see from our defensive line. And so we on to defense. So let's see some tackles here. See you less in tackles for the team. So Pierre Desire, the cornerback, five uh, tackles. And then we have Kurt, Christian Kirksey, four tackles. And assisted tackle and all that kind of stuff. Uh, let's go to, just go to tackles in general. Let's see this. Yeah, so five, five. And Quan Williams, another corner, five tackles for him. Just in get uh, Gilbert four. Anything else? Let's see sacks. Anyone have any sacks? Oh, Emmanuel Ogba, what, one sack on there. So Ogba, not too bad. Playing the left outside linebacker position. We did have Mingo there. We could. I don't know. The decision really now is to see if we start Mingo or Ogba. Though Ogba is really good. He's a really great rookie to have on this team. So maybe could maybe start Ogba. Ogba, I don't know. Now, interceptions. No interceptions for the team. Uh, anything else to really look at? Pass deflections. Wait, right here. Actually, no catches allowed. I want to see this. No catches allowed? It doesn't make any sense, but uh, anything else? Christian Kirksey, four pass deflections. Not too bad. And Kendra at one. Anything else? Uh, we got fumble recoveries. How many fumble recoveries we had? Zero. Four fumbles, probably none, obviously. Uh, anything else? Nah, there's nothing else. So, 
Look at these stats. You don't really learn too much when it comes to looking at these stats. All I know is we're going to lose a lot of preseason games and regular season games this season. So, we got to take a lot of L's, but eventually we're going to go and get a lot of W's by taking L's just by draft picks. So, team looks decent after this. We have to cut one more player, though, on the team. It doesn't really matter who we really cut because barely anyone really played all that well. Ah, uh, Darius Jennings. We cut him or Jordan Payton. That's the thing. Peyton's got better catching and speed. They're both wide receivers. Uh, we'll height. 6'1", 5'10". Looks like Darius Jennings is the odd man out. So let's go and cut Darius Jennings. We have too much depth at this position. That's the problem. Wide receiver, way too much depth. Anything else? Um, quarterbacks, we can cut a few quarterbacks eventually. Center. Uh, yeah, we have other positions that we have tons of players in. But anyway, we cut the players that we need to cut on this team. So, yeah, let's go. And uh, we don't need to improve the team. Let's go check this out. Just see the, this tab and see what's on here. So we don't need to set a quarterback. We don't need McCarron. Don't need Blaine, Blaine Gabbard on there. Uh, Brett Hundley, don't need him. Nick Foles, 70 overall. He's dropped tremendously. Uh, and that's about it. Uh, just keep sl uh, selecting quarterbacks for us. No one did that. And yeah, so that's basically it for this week. Let's go and sim the next week and see if we can go and maybe win next week. I want to actually win a preseason game just to see how well our rookies play because most of our positions we got a fair amount of rookies starting. So now we've got three players this week. That's your weekly training. So we're going to go, uh, we'll leave all that stuff right there. Let's go and do this weekly training pretty quickly and see how it goes. Okay, so now right now we have the offensive game plan. So we got middle pass or medium pass, sorry, curl flats, and our cover two defense. So just based on this, uh, these guys are good. Agba, should we do Agba? Uh, let's go in here. How do we select Agba? Well, we'll actually Scooby right. We don't really need too much. Let's go and bring in Betonio. There we go. So Betonio now on there. And Agba's still there. Okay, so let's go and start this training. Doing the cover two and our curl flats. small steps. I'm proud of you. Keep it up. So you did win that silver on the medium pass curl flats. It's not too bad of throws by Robert Griffin III, but let's move on to the defense now. Hey man, that was great. I mean, you had a great day today. The game is really starting to slow down for you, isn't it? I can't wait to see what you're going to do on Sunday. Good job. So another successful practice on here. We got we got two silvers on the day. Not too bad, but let's go move on to the menus and see what's up the rest of this week. So it's a good practice for week two, but let's go and see where we're starting for this week. So RG3, I'd say we don't really need to play him this week, so, and I want to get some Kessler sometimes. So let's move Macau into starter. And Kessler to back up. So Kessler gets mo the majority of the snaps for this week. And one thing I want to do, though, is start Duke Johnson so Isaiah Crowell gets some time in the second half and basically three quarters. So the rest of this th seems fine. Uh, we could go start... Um, yeah, I think it's fine either way it is. Because we got the right receivers starting and all that stuff. I don't want Corey Coleman getting injured, so we'll leave him as a starter. And the rest seems just about fine. Because I want Ogba to get some time, too. Uh, yeah, everything seems great. So let's go and move on to see week two preseason game. On the ground with Cole. And they get to him quickly here as he stopped right around the third. Staying on schedule. Three to four yards on first down. He's set up very well for the rest of the drive. Looking left side, it's complete. He's got it. 
And he's going to be brought down just shy of the five at the six. Nine yards on the play there, and it sets him up first and goal. Here we go. Kessler on fourth down. And this is incomplete. A disappointing drop there on fourth and goal. And the Falcons' defense stands tall. You've got to move on. I mean, you have another opponent next week. You dwell on this one. It hurts you the following week. That's where the 24-hour rule comes into play. Okay, so we take another L in this week, week two, so we're owing to the preseason, but it doesn't really matter too much as our players are developing, which is exactly what we want to do. So right now we have a few upgrades we can do right now. We have Christian Kirksey, we have Corey Coleman, we have Seth DeValve, we have Taylor Gabriel, a whole bunch of the great players on this list, but we're going to go and actually, uh, we could probably auto-upgrade for most of these guys, actually. Yeah, because I have no idea what to do, and besides... Most of those guys are overall wouldn't go up barely at all with it when it comes to their upgrades. So move on from there with their upgrades already made by the coaches. So now we're going to go and check what players to cut. But first we're going to go check the box score on this game and just see how well we did. So clearly we did not play that great. We didn't, have, we didn't play that bad either. We just didn't, couldn't get in the red zone. We couldn't get in the end zone for touchdowns a lot. Just really sucked. But anyway, let's move to our passing game. So our passing game looks like obviously Kessler played the entire three quarters but Cody Kessler 178 yards passing a 58.3 QB passing uh, rating is not good so not the not great of a game from Cody Kessler but an interception 26 yards is the longest pass he had he was sacked five times this game so it was brutal for Cody Kessler maybe holding onto the ball way too much but oh, way too long but anything else I guess we had Josh McGowan 34 yards passing it wasn't that bad, but I don't know. It's decent. Let's move on to rushing. So Isaiah Crowell, he his chance. He was 34 yards rushing on a 10 attempts, 3.4 yards per carry. Not too bad, I guess. Duke Johnson only had two carries for two yards, but oh well, it's not too much. And that's basically about it for their stats for run game. Now receivers. So receivers set the valve impressed once again. So tight end Seth the valve is looking very good. 97 yards receiving on Senate seven. Uh, receptions 13.9 yards is the average so great game for I set the valve in the first two weeks so he's looking to maybe break or even crack that uh, uh, week one roster maybe but Gary Barnes looks to be a starter at tight end but anything else we got Ricardo Lewis who had 29 yards receiving let's go sort this here yeah there you go Duke Johnson 28 yards receiving Jordan Payton 21 and that's basically about it for the receivers so let's move on to I guess blocking See who let up sacks. This looks like Michael Bowie and Caleb Johnson allowed sacks on the day. So, I don't know about them. Right tackle and right guard. Their back episodes expected, but still. Caleb Johnson, Michael Bowie, I don't know about them. Now let's move on to defense. So, defense. Who had the most tackles here? Start by tackles here. So, Christian Crooksy, two total tackles is the most. So, that's pretty bad. But, uh, oh no, here you go. Tackles right there. So five tackles for Christian Kirksey, five for Emmanuel Ogba, but a great game by him. Uh, Campbell at four, Desire at four, and Joe Hayden at four. So decent amount of tackles for our defense, not too bad. But Ogba looking very good in the preseason so far. And now anything else? I guess we didn't have any field goals, so that's about it. So let's go and move on to the cutting stage. So we got to cut three more players this week. So let's see who we have to cut on this team. Any good ones? So Jordan Payton, 90 speed. You have Randall, Randall Teffler, tight end, 62 overall. Probably going to cut Randall Teffler just based on that. We have a lot of, basically we have a lot of players on our tight end position. There we go. So let's see who's next. So we have Glenn Winston, 63 overall halfback, or running back, sorry. Uh, 81 overall, or 81 speed, sorry. Uh, yeah, actually we'll cut him. We, don't, we have too many running, back, running backs. So now we have to cut two more players on here. See so Charles Gaines, 64 overall, 23 year old, fullback. Uh, or not cornerback, cornerback, that's what it is. I don't have my contacts in, so I don't, can't really read, but cornerback, 64 overall. We'll keep him right there. Uh, Rashad Higgins. Hmm. Higgins actually, we'll probably, uh, yeah, we'll cut him. He doesn't have too much speed. There you go. Now I have to cut one more player on here. So it's between Trey Caldwell, well, at least that's recommended. Uh, Charles Gaines. Let's see a QB. Who would he have a QB? We haven't gave Austin Davis a chance. We'll give him a chance next week. Let's go to uh, anything else. So Jordan Payton. Hmm. 
Caldwell's not too bad. He's 22 too. You gotta remember that. Uh, wait. Does he have? Does he have normal development? Okay. He's a rookie. Mm, he's not too bad though. I like him. Anything else? We'll practice. We'll back out here and we'll go back in and see if it's changed. Cause sometimes they change their their recommendations. So wait. So did we cut everybody? It said we need to cut four players, but I guess not. So because we cut the players we need to cut. Let's go and name our starters for this week three preseason game. I get this roll in here. So we got McCown, Kessler, and Robert Griffin the third. So we'll bring RG3 in once again. Uh, should we have RG3 play a second half? Or, nah, he's our starter. We're not going to do that. Uh, we'll do. We'll give Kessler once another chance once again. Actually, wait. Uh, we'll leave him there. How about that? We'll give him a day off or a leak off. And we'll bring back the same. The rotation this week. Okay, so our offense and defense looks great. I did only do one more little thing. I added Gabriel at the th third wide receiver position right there at backup. So he plays. So anything else change? Doesn't look like it. So DeValve looking very good so far. Hopefully, the only problem is that he's got Gary Barnes ahead of them. So he will be the backup for the season. But the thing is, as DeValve, he's got potential on him. He's a decent player. You never know what will happen with Seth DeValve. So let's go move on to this. What are you doing? Uh. Let's go move on to the next week. So we have nothing really left to do. Actually, wait. One thing we should probably check out right now is who was cut from the week. Transaction. See who is cut in the NFL and see what happens. So, got our, our cuttings. Uh, okay, so we got Casanova McKinsey. And even big cut, basically. LaShawn Sims, David Cobb. Uh, anyone else? There's not really nothing too much big. Basically, teams are they're not gonna release big players this early and off in the preseason. Big stuff will happen probably in week four of the preseason, so we'll have to watch for that. But anyway, let's go and move on to the very next week and see what happens. Move on right there. Actually, after this, we'll go check out what happened in the NFL for like the standings and all that stuff. Just see what's going on. See what teams are excelling, what teams are bad. We're obviously near the bottom of the NFL when it comes to preseason so far. But anyway, let's see what week three looks like in the NFL preseason. So right now in the AFC North, uh, we have the Ravens 1-1, one one, the Bengals 1-1. One one, and obviously Steelers and us are 0-2. So let's see the NFL in general. So here's number one. So the Colts 2-0 and, oh, and a lot of teams 2-0 oh, actually. So the Colts looking not too bad right there. The points for 72 points for us. They're putting up numbers here. It's pretty good. But anyway, let's go and check out what happened with our training so let's go move on to training see what's going on here so who we we're going to practice today we have medium pass for a drive and pass defense cover two okay so we're going to be playing the buccaneers this week so let's go and practice for the buccaneers in week three of the nfl preseason Flag 32. Flag 32. all right this is for all the marbles this is for gold So in offense, we finally get a gold this time once again. So let's go move on to the defense and see if we get another gold in this practice preseason. Hey man, that was great. I mean, you had a great day today. The game is really starting to slow down for you, isn't it? I can't wait to see what you're going to do on Sunday. Good job. So double gold this week for the offense and the defense. Let's go and move on. Okay, so we got the players in the positions that we want for this week. Let's go move on to this game between the Browns and the Buccaneers for this preseason week. Every angle and shut the back. Brandon, now we find out what their definition of commitment is. They've run it on the first two plays. And that's going to be caught for a Browns touchdown. Their big tight end, his second touchdown on the season. And the Browns are within an extra second down. Partners, a lot of fun watching the NFL now, isn't it? Because when the big fella runs routes, it used to be when we were kids, he'd run about. And oh, he coughed it up. And it's picked up by the Buccaneers. And his crew will take over. 
And the box with an extra defender of the secondary now on third down. Now McCown, he's going to leave this for his running back. It's complete. And he gets it to the 32. Good enough for a first down. From the red zone now, first down. Here's Kessler. This will be caught at the two. And he is into the end zone. Touchdown, Cleveland. Marlon Moore, a 16-yard touchdown. And the Browns add on to their lead. And a tip of the cap to Cody Kessler, the young rookie. That's his first touchdown pass in his NFL career. And maybe my favorite point guard on that play, but do you like it? I do because a lot of the time you're struggling because your passing lanes are clogged. That usually happens when you're throwing the ball underneath. People start and a big loss here as he's taken down. Carl Nassib, the rookie from Penn State, in there to get him for what will be a loss of 13 yards. Now that was a passer's night. Ah! Got to try it here. He's back to throw. And no, it's incomplete. They had to go for it with such little time remaining. And this defense is going to get the football back. All right, Charles, so you win the game. Not only do you get the W in the left-hand column, you get some momentum for the coming week. Now when you go into the week and you're telling the guys what mistakes have to be corrected, what we have to do to win going forward, you have their full attention. They're excited, they're happy, and they know if they can build that momentum, they can ultimately achieve all their goals. So we finally got our first W of the preseason against those Buccaneers. So Sidney Weaver Jr. finally one win, but it's in the preseason, so it doesn't matter whatsoever. So let's go and move on to the next activities for the preseason. So see Bracavius Mingo, he got a little bit of that stuff. Yeah, I'll let, I'll let the computer to go through this because I'm getting a little too long in this episode right now. Spending a little bit too much time upgrading and all that kind of stuff. So I'll let the computer upgrade them. Hopefully it'll give them the right upgrades so they'll be good players for the future. So let's go move on to the rest of the preseason activities for week three. So let's go. Uh, we could look at the box score, I guess. It was a great game, though. Our offense is actually moving for once. Last week, no points. This week, 24. So improvement right there. But look at this. Josh McCowan, great game by him. We're going to go on uh, Browns, actually. There. Okay, so Josh McCowan, 142 yards passing, 158.3 QB passing rating. Same with Cody Kessler, too. Buddy, two touchdown passes, one sack against him. Great game by Co Josh McCowan. But Cody Kessler, too, same passing rating, 76 yards passing, one touchdown. Great game by him, too. And Arbor Griffin, third, 85.4. 40 yards passing, no interceptions, and yeah, so great game by our quarterbacks. So rushing, now you have Duke Johnson, 18 carries, 57 yards, 3.2 average, not the greatest, but Isaiah Crow all four carries for 28 yards, uh, and McCallan a touchdown, or not a touchdown, a fumble. Let's go, what do we have left? Receiving, so set the valve, impress once again, so 27 yards receiving, four receptions, not too bad. Let's go on to the top guy. So the top guy, Taylor Gabriel, 84 yards of receiving, three receptions. Uh, Ricardo Lewis, three receptions for 50 yards. Duke Johnson, two for 32. Gary Barnes, two for 28. And set the valve, obviously, four for 27. So the reliable tight end gets touchdown in this game. Same with Marlon Moore with that 17-yard uh, catch for the touchdown. So great game by our offense. Our offense played fantastic. Let's go move on to our defense. So defense, how'd it go? So our man, Bakari Rambo, in st strong safety. Three solo tackles and for three tackles on the day. Uh, Desire at three once again. So Desire or Desire, I think it's Desir. Desir, that's what it is. Not Desire, it's stupid. But Desir, three tackles. He's been consistent the entire preseason. So he's looking pretty good for the regular season. But Rambo, not too bad of a game by him. Anyone else? Ogba, three tackles for... Two, two assisted, one solo. And 0.5 a sack, too. So, looks like Nasib had 0.5. Same with Ogba. So, looks like they're both in on the sack. And Nate Orchard, the one sack. So, left outside linebacker Nate Orchard getting in on those sacks. That's pretty good to see by our defense. Let's see who let us in sacks, though. Yeah, Orchard. And then we have Nasib and Ogba. Kicking, though. Who do we have? Coons. One field goal. A 34 yard field goal. Not too bad. Uh, punting. 90 yard punts or 90 overall and kick return punt return 12 yards not too bad i guess it's not the greatest but i mean it's decent so let's go and move on to the cutting stage we gotta cut some more players this team so more hearts will be shattered in this week but 
just the way it is, man. I'm sorry. Get the cut players. If we didn't have the cut players, it way too big of a roster. But anyway, let's see if we had the cut. So Marlon Bo Moore. I don't know. He did get the touchdown this week. But the thing is, we have a lot of depth at this position. Exactly what they said for the suggested uh, reasons for cut. Fifth wide receiver on the depth chart. Okay. Uh, Jordan Payton, though. Is he any better? He is. Ooh, not looking good for the man. Marlon Moore, though. Yeah. I'm sorry, but... Yeah, I'm sorry. Gotta be like Lumberg. Gonna cut you down here. I'm sorry. But anyway, we did cut Marlon Moore. He just had a touchdown last week. It doesn't make any sense whatsoever, but, I mean, he just got... It's just... Uh, I don't know. It's too hard. But anyway, we gotta cut a few more players on here. It says we have to cut five players. Okay. So, who should we cut on here? We have Cam Johnson. Left and linebacker. Hmm. Cam Johnson. We'll leave him for now. Derek Kindred. Should we... Now nah, we'll keep him. He's good. Uh, Sam Baker. Yeah, I can go without Sam. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Sam. We have too much depth. So now, Xavier Cooper. Cooper, though. Sorry. I keep saying Cooper. You know what, for the exact reason like that, I uh, actually he's not too bad though. Right in is 66 overall. Let's see this. Uh, he's decent. He's okay, we'll leave him. Cam Johnson, left as a linebacker, he's fine there. Charles Gaines though, cornerback. 90 speed, 77 man coverage. He's okay though. Let's get getting to the point where like I'm cutting good guys, that's the problem. Now, Jordan Payton though. Like, some of these guys actually go to, go to our practice roster if we could. I could probably do that. I could probably put Peyton and Charles Gaines on the practice roster if I cut them. You know, that sounds great to me. So let's go and cut Jordan Peyton. I'm sorry, just didn't give him much of a shot. And uh, Charles Gaines or Cooper. You know, Cooper can go. We can always put him on the practice roster. So who else on here? We can cut one more player, I guess. Nah, I'm not feeling it. Okay, so we cut the four players we need to cut. Do we need to cut any more? Nope. Okay, good. Okay, so who is left on this team? We cut a lot of players, but anyone left? It's good. And our team is decent. We need to add a right tackle desperately right now. Let's go to some right tackles right now, live in the commentary, to see if we can find a good right tackle in the free agency, because we need one ASAP. He's terrible. Well, he's not terrible, but he's decent. Ooh. Bobby. Bobby Hart. You know what? I'm going to add Bobby. Bobby the man. Okay. So we added Bobby Hart on the team. 22 years old, 71 overall, a gem. So somebody cut him. I have no idea who, but they're pretty stupid for doing that. He's pretty young. I guess they have a lot of depth at right tackle, I guess. But let's go check out the top 100 for agents after three weeks of, I guess, preseason. So let's go see who's top. So we have Arian Foster. Looks like Fitzpatrick is picked up, which is kind of weird. I thought someone already... Wait. Justin Durant. Do we need a left outside linebacker? I mean, Durant's a great one. I like his brother, Darian Durant, plays in the CFL as a starting quarterback for the Saskatchewan Rough Riders, my favorite team in the CFL. And from what I've heard, Justin Durant's not too bad in the NFL. I'm sorry if I don't know too much about the NFL. More of a CFL guy, but NFL, Justin Durant, he's not too bad of a player from what I've heard. 30 years old, 77 overall, 619 years experience. He does play for Dallas in real life, but on here for some reason he's a free agent. So, Justin Durant, do we need any positions or any players at left outside linebacker? That's the thing. Left outside linebacker on defense. Yeah, we have Mingo and Ogba. That's right, I forgot about that. So, we don't need Justin Durant. Our defensive, li defensive line is not the greatest. Actually, yeah, we're fine where we're at right now, actually. Yeah, we can't really get, improve our defensive line much even better than this. I don't want to spend too much money on the team. That's the problem. I'm kind of a cheap owner, you know? I don't want to spend too much money. I do. I would spend a lot of money if it's like good free agents, but not like crap. You guys are like 76. They're not the greatest. 35 years old and pay them like $5 million for one year. I'm not the kind of guy. I'm kind of the guy who gives long-term contracts that are smart. So... No dice for the rest of these free agents. Larson look pretty crappy, in fact. But Arian Foster, though, we need help on our kick returning. That's for sure. We need help on kick returning. I'm going to start. He's not doing the greatest. Hawkins. We need a better guy. We need, like, a 90 guy. That's the thing. We need exciting play players. So let's go ahead and add another player to the team. 
could always cut a guy if we need to. So let's go to kick returning slash punt returning and see who's on here because we need some good players when it comes to punt returning. Because if punt returning helps you tremendously because it goes sets your team up and wherever you're starting from really impacts if you're going to have a good drive or not. So let's go to... Where is it at? Where is it? Oh, I guess we have to go to... Uh, wide receivers, I guess? I don't know. Yeah, anything on here? Wait, is there an all? Damn, it's only top 100. Where is the kick returning? Come on, I need that. Or did I, I probably passed it, didn't I? Oh my god. I passed it, didn't I? I swear it's on here. There it is, right there. How stupid am I? Okay. So, kick returning. Who's the best? Reggie Bush. Okay. Uh, or is punt returning? I don't, I don't want to sign Reggie Bush. He's kind of... I don't want to sign big names kind of thing, you know? Reggie Bush doesn't fit on the Browns. Mm, where is that punt returning? I guess it's not on here. So, I guess we're stuck with Reggie Bush on here for the kick returning. He went better. Antonio Cromartie, who was signed by the Colts, I believe. Uh... Yeah, I guess there's no one really out there. So, we're decent when it comes to punt returning, I guess, compared to the free agency. We're too late on that one, but... Our team's gonna be in the toilet anyway, so it doesn't really matter too much. But all the all, all the stats in here. So, let's go and move on to the next week. See if we do any well. We did get the W, though. That's what I'm happy about. We finally got a W in this preseason. I want to get at least one out of four. So, let's maybe aim to go one, maybe two for four. Or no, two for two. Younger players that can eventually contribute in games. I know that. Okay, so it's got 10 players in this. So we could add players to our practice squad, which is good to see. So maybe we could add those 10 players to our practice squad. That's decent though. Actually, no, I want to steal some players. I want to do that. So let's go do our weekly training, see what's up with the team, the squad. Uh, do we need to do Betonio and Bogba? Actually, what I'm kind of want to do this week is probably do Robert Griffin III. He needs help, like ASAP. Where is he? Where are you, Robbie? He used to go to quarterbacks. Where about that? There you go, RG3. So he's a slow developer. He's not going to be good for a while. Might as well give him the time. So we're focusing this week on the dagger play and cover four. So let's go. Let's get Roy into this practice. Like Keemstar. Alright, you've got one shot left. We're going for gold. Now that's what I'm talking about, fellas. I don't know what happened between last week and this week, but today was a great practice. And this coaching staff is loving it. You guys consistently do that, and I see a lot of victories in our future. Damn, we're killing it with these golds here, like the U.S. Olympic team. But anyway, 5 for 5, we got the golden offense. Let's go right for that gold on defense for this week. Now that's what I'm talking about, fellas. I don't know what happened between last week and this week, but today was a great practice. And this coaching staff is loving it. You guys consistently do that, and I see a lot of victories in our future. And once again, we had another deep gold on this defensive uh, practice. Let's go move on to the rest of the preseason activities for week four, the final week of the preseason. Hopefully, we can go and add another W onto this tally. So, our training is complete, just like as Yoda would say. And let's go. And what else could we really do here? We could probably go and let's probably start Kessler, actually. Should we do that? Yeah. Because Kessler and McCown are the same overall. So you never really know when it comes to that. Plus, Kessler needs more XP for this week, for this year. So 
the thing is, who should we start over here? Start here, Duke Johnson or Isaiah Crowell? I say we get Duke Johnson to start here, and Crowell gets the backup duties. Just based on Duke Johnson's played better this preseason. Plus, Crowell needs a little bit more snaps to prove his worth. So, anyone else should we add in here? Uh, I'd probably be great to add here to set the valve, but the problem is he's more of a tight end though. The thing is now that we finally add though is that we could finally add in practice squad. So practice squad, who should we add to our practice squad? That's the thing. So who on here? What could we actually do? So we got top hundred practice squad eligibles. We need defensive tackle. That's for sure. Adolphus Washington. Let's add him on here. Ah, uh, two point one million. Damn, that's a lot. You know what? Uh, can be stolen too. It's a problem here. Adolphus is actually good enough to start on the Browns. It's the problem. So Adolphus, ah, uh, he's not too bad. Um, uh, we should add in here. Center for sure. Actually, we'll add Max Turk. Add him. Wait. Okay, so Max Turk I accidentally signed him on here. So let's go move him to the practice squad. Just basically because he's a good player. Like sixty nine overall. He's a, a young age. Let's see his. Uh, development, normal development. He's gonna be great in a few years. So great player to add to the practice squad. And let's go add a few more players. Just so we can go and fill us up quickly. So who we add? We have David Cobb. Mm, not too bad, I guess. He's a little five eleven power back. We don't need to add half back, so it's a thing. Defensive tackle Vince Valentine. You know we need we need defensive line help. Let's add him to the practice squad. So who else should we add? Kenyon Drake, uh, Mikel, Marcus Golden. Adolphus Washington, let's add him to the squad. There you go. Anyone else? We do need strong safety. Let's add Anthony Jefferson. This practice squad, you don't really need to look at it too much. I mean, just a little bit. So you know I have an idea what's going on. Uh, full safety. Free safety. Uh, let's see. Left tackle, we got Teo Fabuli, and I don't know how to say his name. Let's go to left tackle. We don't need left tackle, right tackle. Or right end. Let's see Jonathan Bullard. Let's add him on here. There we go. So actually he might be good enough to actually start in our team. Wouldn't he be? Yeah, Jonathan Bullard is great. Ah, uh, we should actually add him to the squad, the real squad. Roy Robertson Harris. Let's see him. Normal. Let's add him on there, why not? So one guy actually bullard, he might be able to be good good enough to start for a team. What? Kemalu? He's not too bad himself too. At him. We need left end and right ends for sure. Defensive our defensive line's decent, but it needs help eventually. So on here the practice squad. Bullard though. Let's see your right end on here. Is he any good? Hey, I don't know if he's any good or not. Oh wait. Yeah, we got Mola. Naseeb. And is Nassib any good? He's quick develop not quick development, damn. Carl Nassib, 70 overall, 23 years old. Should we leave him on there? Oh, we got Bryant too. We can't add him to the practice squad. I mean nice to keep him though, because if you put him on the practice squad, you have no idea if he's getting taken or not. Moe is fine. Uh Man, it sucks. So Naseeb's on there, okay. Ogba could play left end. Hmm. Let's go and cut our, for our four players first. Let's see this. Cut these ten players, actually. Not four, ten. Damn, that's a lot. So who do we need to cut on here? Left outside linebacker, Cam Johnson. Jeff Code, okay. You can probably cut him, too. We have plenty of depth. There you go. Pure Desire, or Desire, he's fine, I like him. Kindred, do we need him? We'll leave him. Durango, yeah, we can get rid of Durango maybe. 68 overall, I don't know. Sean Coleman, we could add these players to practice squad too. Actually, one thing I'm going to do, we're probably going to add Cam Johnson. Oh, we can't add him, damn, it sucks. Kindred though, what? We'll Kindred. On to there. Sean Coleman. Right tackle. I don't know about him. Patrick Murray, we might... Uh, he, he's a kicker, though. That's the thing. Awareness, he's... Mm, I don't know. 
player, free safety. Let's see some of these guys we can add to the practice squad. Scooby Wright the third. I don't really want to cut him, but we'll add him to the practice squad. Hopefully he doesn't get taken. Bobby Hart, right tackle. Um, Bobby. Hmm. We'll leave him there. And Nate Orchard. Left-footed linebacker. We'll keep him at the practice squad. There you go. Austin Davis. Austin Davis we don't need. We'll cut Austin Davis. Poyer. Who do we have any players we cut? We get five players. Okay. Bobby Hart. Poyer. Our practice squad's already maxed out. Deser. Deser. Mm. I think we might be good with him. Wait. Yeah, we'll, we're good with him. He's not too bad, but, I mean, we have too much, too many players left on here. It sucks. We'll cut Patrick Murray. Three players left. Poyer. We'll cut Poyer. Sean Coleman. Uh, anyone bad? Tank Carter. Yeah, we probably cut him too. And one left player, one last player in here. We're probably going to go and cut... Most likely is going to be Sean Coleman. I'm sorry. It's just the way it is. So you finally cut the last player on here. Wait, what? Hmm, okay, so it doesn't matter. So we cut all the players we need to. Our team is fine. One thing I want to check out right now is our kickers are terrible. So let's go and check out some kickers on the free agency. Hopefully there's some. Go on here. Kickers. 74 overall Billy Cundiff. Randy Bullock. Is he better than what we have right now? I can't remember if we can have anything good. Go to my team. Go to depth chart. Who do we have a kicker? That's the thing. Kicker. Travis Coons. Okay. So Coons isn't the greatest. Let's say that right now. It's easily to, easy to say, but I don't know about Coons. So... Yeah, the players we hit, the players that are on there aren't the greatest, so we'll leave right there. So our positions, our team sucks. That's a, basically a flat line right here. Our team's terrible, but our practice squad looking very good though. We got Bowler right there. He could be even a starter on this team. The quick development. Uh, Camelou. The only problem is these guys could get picked up though. That's a thing. You never really know. So our practice squad. Yeah, I don't know if it's safe or not, but right now looks decent so let's go move on to the final activity of this preseason and that's week four's game between the chicago bears the own three bears in fact against the one and two cleveland browns good matchup they come up in an offset eye they'll run it with johnson and this will result in him losing yardage back to the three they'll lose a yard and it brings up third Two straight shots on the ground. Now on third, do you go to the air? I think the possibility exists, and if you're doing it, you're probably going play action since you ran it twice. But I often think that second down is a time you go play action and throw the ball. I say commit to the run and think about it being four down territory. No, 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 no. Check. Patriot. Patriot. They'll try to run it in. Johnson, no gain on the play that time. So a big stop, and it's going to leave him with a fourth and goal. And Coons connects on this one. It's good. And they bump the lead up to four now at 10-6. So they get the three here, but you wonder whether that's going to be enough. Yeah, I mean, you've now made it so they need a touchdown rather than... Nine. One final shot. They'll look to throw. And, oh, a crusher there as it's intercepted. Picked off. It's the Pro Bowl corner. Joe Hayden with it. What a hard-fought, low-scoring game. A tough one to lose always, partner. For the losing team, not beautiful. But for the winning team, that's almost textbook, old-school football. And you know I loved it. So we do end up going 2-2 two two in the preseason for the NFL uh, preseason this year. So we did end up winning, get, I think, week 2 and, or no, week 3 and week 4 to make it 2-2. Two two. So right after this game, we have a few players going to upgrade with their stats. 
I don't know what I'll do. I'll just go and auto upgrade these guys for these weak. So there you go. So we auto grip upgraded everybody. 76 overall, 79 defense, 79 offense. Not too bad of a team. So the Browns, I guess they upgraded a little bit on there and if this week, but we did play really well. We won the game, the box score against the uh, Chicago Bears. So let's go to player stats. You played played really well on offense. We didn't get enough touchdowns, but. I mean, that doesn't really matter too much. Cody Kessler had a great game. 146 yards passing, one touchdown, zero interceptions. Great game from Cody Kessler. But let's go on to rushing. So we go to the Browns. Duke Johnson, 59 yards rushing on 19 carries. Not too bad right there. Isaiah Crowell, all 12 yards on four carries. And then uh, who else do we have? I think it's about it. So Duke Johnson, 3.1 yards per carry. Not the greatest, but I mean, I don't know. So let's go to receiving. So... Set the valve, another great game by him. He had a fantastic preseason. 95 yards receiving on five receptions. Then we have Ricardo Lewis, four, 42 yards receiving on three receptions. And that's basically it for big stats. So, on touchdown, 95 yards for set the valve. Looking very bright for his career with the Browns. Let's go to defense. So, defense, who had the most tackles? So, like Christian Kirksey had seven tackles. I have Campbell at five. Jamar Taylor had five, Quan Miller, I mean, Williams had four, and that's basically about it for a big amount of tackles. Let's see sacks. One sack by Campbell, so that's a pretty good week. You get a pretty good preseason by Campbell, though. The strong safety, looking very good. And anything else? I guess we'll go to kicking. So Coons obviously one for one on the 20 yard chip shot to win the game. Not too, not too bad, but game winning field goal by Travis Coons. Wins game, or I guess week four in the preseason for the Browns. They made it two and two in the preseason. Not, not actually too bad. I thought we'd play terrible in the preseason and the regular season, but at least we won two games here in this preseason. So let's go and move on. I guess no. We'll look at some of these stats, or not look at these stats. Look at our team before we move on to the regular season. So, Robert Griffin the third didn't had the greatest preseason. We barely. Didn't really play him too much, but Cody Kessler, though, great game by him. 70 overall, he's looking very good for our team, but Crowell had a decent uh, preseason, 7 Duke Johnson. Uh, Corey Coleman, decent preseason. Uh, who else? Gordon had a decent one, too. Barnage, I don't know about him. And Deval, a great preseason, looking very good for the Browns. Our offensive line didn't play, actually played pretty well. Defensive line. I don't know if we, how many, we didn't really get too many sacks. It was mainly from our secondary, but... I don't know, I guess they're okay. They're not the greatest, but, I mean, they're decent. So, let's move on to special teams. So, Travis Coons. I don't know about him. He didn't really... I saw some of the some of the games I didn't think he would make some of these kicks, but he did. So, he's kind of... I don't know where I stand with Travis Coons, basically what I'm saying. He's okay, but he's not the greatest. But let's go... Actually, not... Oh, there we go. Let's go and move on. And... Wait. I guess we'll go and sim one week. Or should we... I don't know. Uh, wait, no, we'll just go check this out. So preseason, we played the, the Packers, we lost. We played the Falcons, we lost. We played the Buccaneers, we won. And the Bears, and we won again. So let's go check out the preseason standings in the AFC. Well, looks like Texans went for 3 0. Uh, same with the Eagles and the Rams in New in LA. Anyone else? Colts were 2 and, two and 1. I don't know. I got to send one more week in order to check this out see their actual stats let's move right here and sim one more week that's week there we go i want to go check out what happened at the preseason though i just want to see who won it i guess i don't know if you can but anyway we had a decent preseason though two and two i thought for sure we would lose i thought we didn't even win a game though that's what i thought so now we finally advanced the regular season there's our team after the preseason. Not the greatest, but, I mean, we're okay. We're not going to be making the playoffs this year for sure. Our team is terrible. But, good defense. We had decent defense. They're decent. They're all C's and B's. So, it's not the greatest either. But, practice squad, though. I'm kind of proud about our practice squad, though. Just based on Bullard, though. He can almost start for us. Look at this guy. He's got quick development. Pretty decent stats for a 70 overall. Jonathan Bullard looking very good for us. Maybe you could play him next year. Let's go, uh, anything else? Check out, I guess we could check out the, we could check out preseason stats. I think we can. Uh, right here. Oh, you can. Okay, good. We gotta go and check out the AFC North stats for the preseason. See how we finished. I'm pretty sure you may finish second in the preseason. Or can we? 
Oh, we can. Okay, so it looks like we did. I don't know. You we were up there in the AFC North. We were up there in the NFL. Two and two. Not the greatest. Not the worst. But anyway, I guess I'll next episode off for your incredibly long preseason episode. I just wanted to go and uh, make our first preseason a little memorable by just going in there, playing a few play of the moment games, and all that kind of stuff. So I guess I'll next episode off for you. Just make sure to like and subscribe for more brands franchise mode. And thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.